have the original radiator in here. But what original about the caravan? You said okay. The, the caravan's on the on the, the other side. Other side. So you have one radiator on this side, on the passenger side. Okay. Well, what? Well, the, yeah. The passenger side has the original radiator. Mm -hmm. And you were say something about the tubing then. Yeah, the tubing goes in front of the engine across where the cross member is instead of back behind here. Most people have a big tube back yes, there. Yes, I've got one here. So you have it going in front of the engine. I see. Okay. And I used a smaller now, why, why did you do that? Why did you, uh, why did you remove this tubing? I just liked it better. I see. Okay. So I was thinking of putting some fins on mine. That wouldn't hurt you. Yeah. Uh, now, it uh, surprises me, yours is further in than mine. You've got quite a bit of room here. I don't. Well, you've got the mechanical fan. No, no, mine has been converted, and then I, I reconverted it and put another one in. Now, what fan do you have? Is that the Taurus? That's the Taurus. And what, what year Taurus was that from? I don't know. Uh -huh. I just saw it laid there among the Taurus, and somebody just laid it there. Or mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. It's a single speed. Mm -hmm. high, it's single high speed on it instead of the two speed. Mm -hmm. And you have it thermostatically controlled? Yes. Uh huh. And you have it come on at what temperature? I, the, at the bottom of this radiator, uh -huh. I have it come on at about 165. Uh huh. At the bottom. At the mm -hmm. bottom of this radiator. Mm -hmm. So that if this radiator is getting my water below 165, I don't care. Uh huh. I don't need any fans. When mm -hmm. I'm going along the highway in a normal situation, fans, fans never come on. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, I put the, the caravan in here, and I used a 91 caravan, and the, the pipes on that come out sideways, so they they come out actually through the through the uh, fiberglass. For now, you were going to say that you use smaller for what reason? Smaller to throttle down the water flow because what I found mm -hmm. was I was getting too much water flow through the engine to pick up heat. So I was mm -hmm. overheating um, even even though the radiators were cooling the water. Mm -hmm. My water temperature was running low but my engine temperature was running high. I, I did a lot more instrumentation now, of measuring temperatures here and temperatures there. Mm -hmm. I didn't just rely on the water gauge. I, I put temperature sensors along. Now, uh, you know, the thermostat itself has such a small opening. Good morning. Good morning. The thermostat itself has such a small opening. You still have to oh, throttle okay, it. Now mine doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. Well, now I've mine, never looked at mine. I just that opens, it opens big. Uh huh. I see. well, mine probably does too. Then, yeah. I uh, I just assumed you know having yeah, seen. I put it in boiled water. I surprised mm -hmm. what it did compared to regular. Mm -hmm. but, you know the, the thermostats for these, mm -hmm. uh, even from like AutoZone, are like seventeen dollars instead of mm -hmm. two dollars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what what temperature thermostat are you running in there? I'm running in uh, two hundred degree. Uh huh. To try to keep the temperature up. Because yeah. I was running the other one and I didn't get enough heating up front. Yeah. On uh, cold weather. And you got it at AutoZone? No, I got it at Advance. Mm hmm. I was in But the they would East have Coast. it like. Uh, they Same would have thing, it. Mm hmm. Uh, but I got a good. You know, they have huh? the cheap ones and then they have the good ones. Mm hmm. I got the good ones. Can, is it. Could I see how you did your radiator? How you fit it in there? Uh, it's. Oh, you, you, you've you got a lock on. That's all right. That's all right. open, but you're not yeah. going to see much. Uh -huh. You're going to see something else, and you might be interested in it, you might not be. See, all you're going to now, see what is all this? That's my air conditioner. Oh, so that's not stock. <laughs> no. Huh. That needs are more efficient than normal. And I was able to stack two of them in here, but I was able to get these a lot cheaper than one big one. Uh -huh. But I've got a jumper to, to jump between them. But so no, it goes through one and the those other. Are, those are a lot more efficient. Huh. Uh, my pressure, my high pressure is a lot lower. 
Yeah. Well, are you getting colder, colder air then? I did at first, but I, I had a leak, and I put that, um, I put that stuff in, you know, the dye. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that that affected the cooling of the. Of the oh effect. really? Until afterwards, nobody told me that. That and affects the cooling. Yeah, and I got to get all that out of there. I flush that dye out. Of there. I don't know how to do it. I have to reflush. I flushed everything real good. Well, you don't see anything here, do you? <laughs> no. And so, what is this little? That's because I don't. I didn't plumb this radiator back to the other. Mm -hmm. This is my bleeder. I just have to mechanically bleed the air off. Mm -hmm. and I'm what do you mean you didn't plumb it to the other? How to the to the bottle of the air bleed. I see. I see. This is my only air bleed. On. So. Even though they're connected in series, that well, still doesn't take care of it. No. Mm -hmm. it would, any high spot you could trap air. The one thing to keep heating down on this, the biggest thing, is to get the air out of the system. Mm -hmm. You got to bleed off the top of the radiators mm -hmm. and make sure you get you get all air out of them. Yeah. The original one is supposed to plumb up towards the front. Yes. To to the little bottle. It yeah. may or may not get up there. Yeah. Is this opening the Yes. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Can I push that little bag in? Yeah. yeah. It, it's it's far enough in. Yeah. Hey, do you ever see my air conditioner condenser? Okay, that's the radiator showing there. I see. I see the drain. And so the same fan takes care of that's both radiators. That's a very installed. And replaced the original, which was all rusted, and I thought I had a problem with. I didn't. I'm gonna put the original back in because this one failed right away. It's already failed. Mm -hmm. And what I found out was that they have these kind of relays, and some people have had trouble with multiple horn relay players. Uh, but these relays are available in marine rating or in automobile rating. Mm -hmm. The ones we got in here, because it's exposed to it, the original equipment one, were marine rated. Mm -hmm. Does it matter that you get water all over them? Either word now, word. Do you know what each of these things are? Yes. You do? Oh my. I've, I've mapped in to which one is Tell me what is what. And all that kind of thing, see. Okay, I see the one you're putting in. What's it do? Okay, it's number 10, uh -huh. and it does a lot of things. But on the diagrams, it'll show you which one number 10 is. I mean, it, you know, it's, um, I've mapped through and marked all mine. And it's I which see. connectors, which, and then I have a list that tells me where the different connectors are. They're not necessarily the same in every one. In other words, what's the other back one? The, uh, I think it's 10A. I see. And but then the, the one next to the 25? Is 26. Mm -hmm. So but 10, uh, 10A, 25, 26. Well, what you're going to find is they're not necessarily the same because oh. they may have put them in differently. I see. Uh, but the original factory has a little label like this. And you can get to what I found is most of mine were labeled. See the, mm -hmm. this little I see. Uh -huh. tie wrap with the number on it? Yeah. That's factory, and it was real faint, and I darkened it. Mm -hmm. Oh. So there were enough of them labeled that I was able to figure them out, and the rest of my, you know, went by number of wires and all that. Mm -hmm. You know okay. how to pick up which connector you're looking for on the drawings? Um, well, not sure. I'll show you on the drawings. Okay. okay. I see you have a four and five there. That's also for the connectors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I found where they were. I took them apart. I cleaned them. I lubricated them and put them back together again. Every one of them in my unit. And that helped my electrical mm -hmm. immensely. I also cleaned every one of the grounds. And you can see the grease that I got on there. Mm -hmm. For that. Oh, you've got a lot of grounds coming from there. Yeah, okay, so 
Uh, what uh, did you? I don't know. I don't know anything about the Wabasco heater. I just took mine out. That's all I did. <laughs> well, I can't go through all of it at one mm -hmm. time. And, uh, you know, it's got the manual. Mm -hmm. but basically, one thing I did on, on mine is I put valves around it so that I could take it in and out. And where the uh, mounting bolts were, mm -hmm. I took and made a bracket so that the water pump and the the, say, the other unit mount together. So I just. I can get it in and out of there real fast. Mm -hmm. What is I this shut off for? When I'm filling mine, this the correct way to fill one, or the way the factory recommended, the number one, you know, the, 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 the best way, they said, was to fill under pressure at this point here mm -hmm. and block this off. Mm -hmm. And so this is for blocking off. I see. Um, it's, it's, um, well, do you hold? That's my number three radiator. Ah, huh. so what? What is the, it out the, of? This I took the original bumper out of here uh -huh. and had a stronger one made, and it basically air moves in here. Mm -hmm. It's blocked off on the back. Air exhausts at this point and this point here. Air comes in here, exhausts out here. Hmm. Well, what kind of a radiator is that? What is that? It's a real long, narrow one, huh? It, is that all one piece? What that is, you you know the uh, hydronic heating that, that people have along the baseboards of houses? Mm -hmm. It has a three quarter inch copper pipe and the aluminum fins on the yeah. outside? That's what that is. I see. I picked it up for almost nothing. And it's it's got pieces across here and then a regular heater hose jumper across. So it's separate and pieces? here. So it's um, how many pieces are in there? Well, there, there, I've got two pieces stacked. Um, one on top of the other? Yeah, one on top mm -hmm. of the other one. Mm -hmm. So basically the, the fluid will come through and I can't remember which way I routed it. Let me see. But anyway, okay, the, the fluid comes in this way, comes across the top tube here, jumpers across here, comes over to here, jumpers down to the bottom row, comes here, jumpers mm -hmm. across the frame, comes across, jumpers across the frame, comes to, uh, to the end, and then comes along the top or back to top row and then out. And and where do you get all where is it connected in? Is it it's it's just in series with the heater. With a Wabasco heater? With with the, oh, the yeah, this a heater uh -huh. charger. You said in series with it? Mm-hmm. So does the heater have to be on for that to flow through? No. Okay, in series it has to go through one to go through the other, though. Yeah. But but you're not going to use your robasto while you're going down the road. It's no. only on when you're parked. Right. But uh, but this is a this is a radiator for cooling the engine. Right. And but I've got a valve here. What's called a bypass valve. Mm -hmm. That when the engine's not running, water doesn't go through this. Mm -hmm. It only goes through it when when the engine's running. And if I cut the heater off, you know, the front so, heater, where most people have a valve here, mm -hmm. I've got a bypass valve on that. It's not got a heater valve, but it's the same. This is actually the heater valve that you'd use on a, on a 86 Chevy van. It's a, called a bypass valve. Just shut off valve. So, you do that manually? That no, valve? It's, it's, got va uh, it's the, vacuum? Th this this operates off vacuum just like uh -huh. the regular valve does. Uh -huh. it just, it's just the fact that, that instead of just shutting off the water to the heater circuit, uh -huh. and, and that only happens on maximum AC. On a regular AC, you don't shut that water off. On maximum, it shuts off. And But at that point in time, I want my cooling. So if I shut off here, that would shut off water here. So I've got this bypass valve. 
and that's that's a standard Chevrolet bypass valve. I mean, that's that's most of the Chevrolet trucks had that. Mm -hmm. This one that I put in here on the radiator, I I I modified so it works backwards. Mm -hmm. But these are all manual valves here, right? What? These are all manual valves. That, those, yeah, those are just in case the other one fails, I can cut it off. If, if I get a leak out here, mm -hmm. and I, I was concerned at first that, you know, what happens if somebody bumps into me, Fernando, huh? uh, and it starts leaking. So I, I uh, put a couple valves there just for mm -hmm. emergency mm -hmm. use. I see. And it makes it nice to work on because if you want to work on a piece of it, you can just valve it off and work on it. Now, the line that brings in water from the engine for the heater is which line? Oh, boy, I don't know. Uh-huh. Um, okay, you so... Know, I can't remember which direction it goes. I just know that, that um, these two lines... Let me see, this one... Mm-hmm. And then the, the other one is hidden back over here on the other mm -hmm. side of the Webasto. Are the lines going to the engine? One of them. Okay, okay. I think I think if I'm not mistaken, this one goes down the driver's side mm -hmm. uh, and makes it to the engine. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one comes back from the engine down the passenger side and comes over to here. Mm -hmm. And then, then it comes. I've got a drawing for it, but I can't remember how. It mm -hmm. So, for this radiator, you take a line that is coming to the heater, and uh, you put a T in there, so it goes into here. No, no, everything's no. in series. It's in series. Okay. So it goes series, through so the. I, I don't. Um, so the, the problem with putting it in parallel, and a lot of people will tell you that parallel is better. Mm -hmm. The thing is about parallel, you don't know how much of it, how much of it's flowing through which part. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's real hard. Mm -hmm. You have to have some sort of a active proportioning valve based on temperature that opens and closes and does all kinds of fancy things, and you'd be getting into a, a piece of equipment that you're. You're talking hundreds of dollars for. Yeah. Uh, and it would be very finicky and hard to maintain. Um, I, th I think, okay, I think, I think this is the, this side here on the passenger side mm -hmm. is your, is your, uh, uh, here. It is from the engine, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So water flows from the engine. Goes down to approximately here, goes through the little little heat exchanger that's under the closet. Mm -hmm. Travels up this side, up around the, the fender well. You mm -hmm. can see him. Comes out here, then goes into the Webasto. Comes out of the Webasto. Goes through the heater. Uh, let's see, where did I put the... Okay, no, okay. Mine, mine, what I've intercepted is before I get to the Webasto, while the water's the hottest, is when it go, comes through here. Mm -hmm. So this cools itself. So it goes there first, that's the yeah, first place it goes. Well, no, it goes to the thing under the closet first. Then it okay. comes to this. Mm -hmm. Comes out of here, goes into the Webasto, um, then through the heater, then around the the uh, driver's side, goes into the hot water heater, and back to the end. Mm -hmm. um, so hot water is always flowing through the one under the the under the closet. Yes. Water is always flowing through there. I see. But I'm, I plan to put a bypass one of these bypass valves on mm -hmm. so that it doesn't flow underneath there unless I want to and I'm just going to manually control it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to 
basically flip up that thing and either have it on or off. It's and, and why would you do that? Cold weather, I want to have it on mm -hmm. to heat inside. In hot weather, I don't want any heat inside the mm -hmm. compartment. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So is hot water always going through here normally, through the heater? Yes. So it's just the on, fan? On the standard Vixen, it, hot water goes through this all the time. I see. Um, and if you turn it to maximum AC, mm -hmm. then you got a, a valve sitting about here mm -hmm. that shuts off water completely mm -hmm. and nothing flows from the engine through this circuit oh, really? on maximum AC. Mm -hmm. um, so then that would and, and disable and on your... on maximum AC, that means that you are losing what little bit of cooling you get from all this mm -hmm. normal piping of, yes. of uh, water through there. So if you turn to maximum AC, your heating will get worse. So, yeah, so that would also disable your bumper your bumper radiator, wouldn't it? Yeah, under normal circumstances, it would. And that's why you installed a different type of a shutoff, huh? Yeah. I wanted to get the, uh, I wanted to allow water to flow, and yet I still wanted to be able to cut it off from the heater. Okay, this is... Now, is that... The original bumper? No. No. I took the outside part off and had a totally different bumper made. So it's... The, the original bumper is like tin can. Maybe I like a tin can. It's real light duty. I see. And this is a lot heavier duty. And so you... So it's totally redone, huh? Yeah. The, huh. You think the rear one or the front one gives you more benefit? Rear one? Mm-hmm. But I did something else, which I can only describe it to you. I can't show it to you. I have to kind of describe you what the sketch is because it's pretty crude. But if you you aren't gonna get it on your on your diagram. Actually, it will pick it up pretty well. Go ahead. Go ahead and mention the the radiator uh, that I got the original radiator. Mm -hmm. What I found was that by mapping it, most of the water flow is is in the third of the radiator closest to the to the body. Mm -hmm. uh, but the air flow is in the two thirds of the radiator towards the towards the passenger side of the car. Um, so you're getting all the water flow on this side, all the air flow over here and you don't get as much cooling. And so we developed a, a baffle to go in the inside the radiator. It's a flat brass piece and it has to be welded in rather than soldered in. Inside the radiator that takes one third, it's at, at one third point on that inlet hole. And it goes one third of the way across the radiator. Very, very simple. Just a flat plate welded inside the radiator. How wide? How long? It 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 baffles it off. It's one third of the way across the radiator. And it, it, it it's one third the length of the radiator. Right. The width. Mm -hmm. The width of the radiator. And then it goes all the way across the other way. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it it completely goes across. Mm -hmm. And it's just spot welded along. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be a a sealed is thing it about in halfway there, but up? It's, is it's got maybe a paper thickness mm -hmm. less than the width of the radiator. But, but is it about halfway up? I mean, no, one, one third of the way up the oh, inlet I see. hole. I see. Okay. So what you want to do is you're, you're taking one third of the water, mm -hmm. and when I say one third of the way up, that's not one third dimension up. It's one third volume, volume. of mm -hmm. or area of that yes. hole. Yes. So you're taking one third of the water. And you're allowing mm -hmm. it to go straight down, it, straight down, and that that's in the area um, closest to the body. And two thirds goes along the top. Two thirds goes along the top for and the other two thirds down. of the radiator, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. goes to the outlet. Mm -hmm. And when I did this, when I was measuring with my system, 
um, putting that in increased this radiator by 10 times the amount of cooling it would put in. Really? 10 times the wow. amount of well, actual heat transfer. You know, that's going to be the first thing I'm going to do. It's the most cost effective. To shut off valves. So, you do that manually? That no, valve? It's, it's, got va uh, it's vacuum? Th this, this operates off vacuum just like uh -huh. the regular valve does. Uh -huh. it's, just a, it's just the fact that, that instead of just shutting off the water to the heater circuit, uh -huh. and, and that only happens on maximum AC. On a regular AC, you don't shut that water off. On maximum, it shuts off. And, but at that point in time, I want my coolant. So if I shut off here, that would shut off water here. So I've got this bypass valve. And that's that's a standard Chevrolet bypass valve. I mean, that's, that's, most of the Chevrolet trucks have that. Mm -hmm. This one that I put in here on the radiator, I, I, I modified so it works backwards. Mm -hmm. But these are all manual valves here, right? What? These are all manual valves. That, those, yeah, those are just in case the other one fails, I can cut it off. If, if I get a leak out here, mm -hmm. and I, I was concerned at first that, you know, what happens if somebody bumps into me? Uh -huh. uh, and it starts leaking. So I, I uh, put a couple of valves there just for mm -hmm. emergency mm -hmm. use. I see. And it makes it nice to work on because if you want to work on a piece of it, you can just valve it off and work on it. Now, the line that brings in water from the engine for the heater is which line? Oh, boy, I don't know. Uh huh. Um, okay, you so. Know, I can't remember which direction it goes. I just know that, that um, these two lines. Let me see this one. Mm hmm. And then the, the other one is hidden back over here on the inside mm -hmm. of the basto. Are the lines going to the engine? One of them. Okay, okay. I think I think if I'm not mistaken, this one goes down the driver's side mm -hmm. uh, and makes it to the engine. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one comes back from the engine down the passenger side and comes over to here. Mm -hmm. And then, then it's plumbed. I've got a drawing for it, but I can't remember how. It mm -hmm. So, for this radiator, you take a line that is coming to the heater, and uh, you put a T in there, so it goes into here. No, no, everything's no. in series. It's in series. Okay. Everything's so it in goes series, through so the. I, I don't. Um, so the, the problem with putting it in parallel, and a lot of people will tell you that parallel is better. Mm -hmm. The thing is about parallel, you don't know how much of it's, how much of it's flowing through which part. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's real hard. Mm -hmm. You have to have some sort of a active proportioning valve based on temperature that opens and closes and does all kinds of fancy things, and you'd be getting into a a piece of equipment that you're talking hundreds of dollars for yeah uh, and it would be very finicky and hard to maintain um, I, th I think okay I think I think this is the this side here on the passenger side mm -hmm. is your is your uh, uh, here it is from the engine okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so water flows from the engine Goes down to approximately here, goes through the little little heat exchanger that's under the closet. Mm -hmm. Travels up this side, up around the, the fender well. Mm -hmm. And see him. Comes out here, then goes into the Webasto. Comes out of the Webasto. Goes through the heater. Uh, let's see, where did I put the... Okay, no, okay. Mine... Mine... 
what I've intercepted is before I get to the Robasto, while the water's the hottest, is when it come, comes through here. Mm -hmm. So this cools it some. So it goes there first. That's the yeah, first place it, it goes. Well, no, it goes to the thing under the closet first. Then it okay. comes to this. Mm -hmm. Comes out of here, goes into the Robasto, um, then through the heater, then around the the uh, driver's side goes into the hot water heater and back to the engine. Mm -hmm. um, so hot water is always flowing through the one under the the under the closet. Yes. Water's always flowing through there. I see. But I'm, I plan to put a bypass one of the bypass valves on mm -hmm. so that it doesn't flow underneath there unless I want to, and I'm just going to manually control it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to basically flip up that thing mm -hmm. and either have it on or off. If it's in and, and why would cold you do weather, that? I want to have it on, mm -hmm. the heat inside, and hot weather, I don't want any heat inside the mm -hmm. compartment. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So is hot water always going through here normally, through the heater? Yes. So it's just the on, fan on the standard Vixen. It, hot water goes through this all the time. I see. Um, and if you turn it to maximum AC, mm -hmm. then you got a a valve sitting about here mm -hmm. that shuts off water completely, mm -hmm. and nothing flows from the engine through this circuit oh, really? on maximum AC. Mm -hmm. Um, so then that would and, and disable and your... And on AC, that means that you are losing what little bit of cooling you get from all this mm -hmm. normal piping of, yes. of uh, water through there. So if you turn to maximum AC, your heating will get worse. So, yeah, so that would also disable your bumper, your bumper radiator, wouldn't it? Yeah, under normal circumstances, it would. And that's why you installed a different type of a shutoff, huh? Yeah. I wanted to get the, uh, I wanted to allow water to flow, and yet I still wanted to be able to cut it off from the heater. Okay, this is... Now is that the original bumper? No. No. I took the outside part off and had a totally different bumper. So it's the, the original bumper is like tin can, maybe like a tin can. It's real light duty. I see. And this is a lot heavier duty. And so you, so it's totally redone, huh? Yeah. The, huh. You think the rear one or the front one gives you more benefit? Rear one. Mm-hmm. But I did something else, which I can only describe it to you. I can't show it to you. I'll have to kind of describe you what the sketch is because it's pretty crude. But if you you aren't gonna get it on your on your diagram. Actually, it will pick it up pretty well. Go ahead. Go ahead and mention the the radiator uh, that I got the original radiator. Mm -hmm. What I found was that by mapping it, most of the water flow is is in the third of the radiator closest to the to the body. Mm -hmm. uh, but the airflow is in the two thirds of the radiator towards the towards the passenger side of the car. Um, so you're getting all the water flow on this side, all the airflow over here, and you don't get as much cooling. And so we developed a, a baffle to go in the inside the radiator. It's a flat brass piece, and it has to be welded in rather than soldered in inside the radiator that takes one third, it's at, at one third point on that inlet hole. And it goes one third of the way across the radiator. Very, very simple, just a flat plate welded inside the radiator. How wide, how long? It, 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 it baffles it off. It's one third of the way across the radiator. And it, it, it's it, one third the length of the radiator? Right, the width, mm -hmm. the width of the radiator. And then it goes all the way across the other way? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
it, it, it completely goes across. Mm -hmm. And it's just spot welded along. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be a, a sealed is thing it in there, but up? It's, is it's got maybe a paper thickness mm -hmm. less than the width of the radiator. But, but is it about halfway up? I mean, no, one, one third of the way up the oh, inlet I hole. See. I see. Okay. So what you want to do is you're, you're taking one third of the water, mm -hmm. and when I say one third of the way up, that's not one third dimension up, it's one third volume, volume. of, mm -hmm. or area of that yes. hole. Yes. So you're taking one third of the water, and you're mm -hmm. allowing it to go straight down. It, straight down, and that, that's in the area um, closest to the body. And two thirds goes along the top. Two thirds goes along the top for the other two thirds down. of the radiator mm -hmm. and goes to the outlet. Mm -hmm. And when I did this, when I was measuring with my system, um, putting that in increased this radiator by 10 times the amount of cooling it would put in. Really? 10 times the wow. amount of well, actual heat transfer. You know, that's going to be the first thing I'm going to do. It's the most cost effective.